Good evening, the state television company Western Armenia represents the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, the historical sites of Western Armenia, 2000 years old Demir Kale cave of Adıyaman. Armenian and Austrian foreign ministers highlight need for comprehensive settlement of Artsakh conflict. USA, the Artsakh conflict is not solved yet. Armenian Foreign Ministry comments on criminal prosecution of Armenian prisoners of war by Azerbaijan, U.S. General. Russia and China will seek to expand their influence in Middle East in case USA leaves. Turkey is gradually reducing defense cooperation with the United States. Monument Watch Academics join forces to save Armenian heritage in Artsakh from Azeri destruction. Sounding Voices The book dedicated to heroes who died in the war was published. The four-floor cave in Adıyaman province of western Armenia, which later got the name Demir Kale, was built by digging. Now, works are being carried out in order to turn this place into a tourist attraction. There are 300 historical ruins and fascinating structures in Adıyaman, which is almost an open-air museum. The four-floor Demir Kale cave, located in Ze village of Indera Gorge, Adıyaman, is among the most interesting buildings. These 2,000-year-old caves were used as a residence, workshops and reservoirs in different civilizations. Although the cave is registered, it's not so famous. Zay Mayer noted, We have many historical places here. The village is rich, both in terms of religious tourism and historical values, and has huge tourism potential. It should be appreciated. Armenia's caretaker foreign minister Aray Evazian held a telephone conversation with Austrian foreign minister Alexander Schallenberg. The Armenian foreign ministry reported, the phone talk focused mainly on the current situation caused by the recent incursion of the Azerbaijani armed forces into Armenia's sovereign territory. The caretaker foreign minister presented in details all the latest developments, reaffirming Armenia's principled position that the Azerbaijani armed forces must immediately and unconditionally be withdrawn from the Armenian sovereign territory. Both officials emphasized the necessity of preserving regional stability and security. In this respect, they highlighted the need for the comprehensive settlement of the Artsakh conflict and addressing the humanitarian problems caused by the war. They exchanged views also on a number of issues of the bilateral agenda, highlighting their mutual commitment to activate the political dialogue, including through contacts at different levels. U.S. President Joe Biden informed Aliyev about readiness of assistance in the resolution of the Artsakh conflict. Biden sent a telegram to Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev, ensuring Washington's readiness in order to assist the discussions of the resolution of the Artsakh conflict, test reports. Accordingly, the U.S. President admitted that the Artsakh conflict is not solved yet, regardless of Baku's position. The Foreign Ministry of Armenia has made a statement over the criminal prosecution of Armenian prisoners of war by Azerbaijan, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs reported via Arman Press. The statement says, We strongly condemn the official Baku's criminal prosecution against Ludwig Mukarchan and Alyosha Khosrovyan, who were captured during the recent aggression of Azerbaijan against Artsakh. Under the international humanitarian law, in particular the Geneva Conventions, the letters are considered prisoners of war and should have immediately released after the end of hostilities. Meanwhile, Azerbaijan has filed fake criminal cases against them thus openly violating both the norms of international humanitarian law and its obligations under the trilateral statement of November 9, 2020. Despite numerous calls from the international community, Azerbaijan continues to use Armenian prisoners of war as political hostages and continues the policy of torture and psychological pressure on them. As the U.S. military presence in the Middle East shrinks, Russia and China will seek to expand their influence in the region. General Grant McKenzie from the U.S. Central Command reported, In general, the Middle East is an area of intense competition between powerful superpowers. I think that if we change our position in the region, Russia and China will be very careful to see if there will be a vacuum that they can use. As the Associated Press reported, McKenzie mentioned, The military trainings and transfer of intelligence data between Turkey and the United States is gradually being stopped. Middle East Eye reports, citing Turkish sources, News.am informs about this. Obviously, the step is a part of the action initiated by the Minister of Internal Affairs of Turkey, Suleyman Soylu. According to the source, the minister has stopped a series of joint projects and cooperation due to disagreements between Ankara and Washington. The aggravation of relations between the United States and Turkey a few years ago has been known for a long time, but Soylu's actions were, in fact, also personal. 
Last week, Soy Lu openly expressed his suspicions, stating that the 2016 coup attempt was ordered by the United States. Speaking on television, he accused the United Arab Emirates of involvement in the coup attempt. Historian and archaeologist Hamlet Petrosian and Anna Leiloyan Yekmalian have brought together archaeologists, architects, cultural anthropologists, and many other experts to launch Monument Watch, a project dedicated to the preservation of Armenian cultural heritage in the parts of Artsakh, which was captured by the Azerbaijani military during the course of the 2020 war. Given the Azeri state sanctions destruction or distortion of the Armenian monuments documented on several occasions. Forgive me, motherland. Forgive me for not being able to build your triumphant march and sorry I could not take all your wounds on my body as a consolation for the long days. Forgive me, today's wonderful children. Forgive me that my blood was not enough to save your lives and of tomorrow's generations. And forgive me, my nation, for not gifting you a harmless country. These lies belong to Vachagan Manukyan, who died in the 44-day war. The presentation of the book Sounding Voices took place on May 22 at the Hunko Aper Library. The book includes the works of 10 heroes who died in the 44-day war. Vartan Amalian, Artak Barsegyan, Shira Gasparian, Avetik Karchikyan, Tigran Harichunyan, Aren Hovanisyan, Hayaser Hovsepian, Vachagan Manukyan, Suren Melikbekyan, Shant Navoyan, and Artsakh poet Komitas Hakopyan, who died in the First Artsakh Liberation War. The book was published on the initiative of the Yerevan Office of the Hamasgain Armenian Educational and Cultural Society. Now we present you Thomas Bogosian Kerry. <laughs> The full version is available on the official website of Western Armenia TV. This was all for today. Goodbye.